the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Uh, before I begin the actual mass, uh, in order to keep everyone up to date, I ask you to please note the following. During the penitential life, at the beginning of the mass, you will note there is a brief pause after the presider's introductory statement. We'll be doing that in just a moment. This is to give us time to refocus on our readiness before the meeting begins the threefold request of God's mercy and grace. Desire to lay close with the prayer. That space is supposed to be in there as to give you the opportunity to concentrate a little bit and prepare yourself for the petitions that follow. Also, an important reminder, at communion time, viewers and ministers will bring communion only to the handicapped in the back that are out there. Uh, seated in the church, of course, if there are family members there with them as well. All others must come forward to receive communion the same as uh, normal, okay? That's your participation, and that you're presenting yourself and coming forward to receive communion. Now, my brothers and sisters, the letter of the Hebrews reminds us that God's discipline is given out of love to keep our conscience strong and our feet on the narrow path. May we keep to the, dis to the discipline of being true disciple and resolve to learn from our missteps as we seek the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you gather the nations of every language into your everlasting love. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory to bring peace to your people. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise. That amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your God, who lives in the reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Sharshish, Put, and Lud, Nosak, Tubal, and Javan. To the distant coastlands, they have never heard of my fame or seen my glory. And they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord. On horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring their offering, to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons, for what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained in it, trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord.
According to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way toward Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then you will stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, well, we ate and drank in your company and you taught us in our streets. Then he'll say to you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourself cast out. People will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south and will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Just who do we think we are? On whom do we model our lives? Look at the tabloids, the press, the TV, and the internet. Who are the famous people? What's important? None of that. Look at how American parents have protected their children over the last three generations trying to keep them from the suffering that Paul talks about in the epistle today. And what has been the result? Drugs and gang fights, the death of children, abuse, adult troubles and challenges have infected our children's education and lives, consumer greed, business and political support for atheist and communism, Look at where the world is today with these two destructive powers of Russia and China. And here we are in America, a little less than 300 years old and we already sense decay. For with all our magnificent science progress, progress this little virus, invisible, caused the pandemic that brought the world to its knees. It may even have been manufactured by men. Look at the tremendous progressive movements to address the poor and marginalized. Yet look at the homeless on our streets today. Do you remember the last century's great leaders in civil rights movements? founded on Christian principles, and yet look at people killing each other worldwide in racial and religious battles today. People cry out to save our pets, and yet allow 60 million abortions in our country. Last week, the Atlantic Monthly Magazine had a rosary on its cover made out of bullets. It claimed it was the weapon of white right-wing extremists. Unbelievable. 
Yet in the voice of Isaiah, God calls out today, I know their works and their thoughts, and I will come to gather the nations of every language. God is coming to get us. God sees all the past hidden idolatries, and he sees the numberless ones we have today of false gods in our world. He is coming to make the world aware of his majesty and his power. Yet as frightening as this event may seem, God is operating on com in compassionate love. He understands how lost we little people are. He's coming to wake us up to our human existence, faithful and profound dignity. The world around us clamors for joy and pleasure without any pain of any kind. But that is not our human reality. Life is not easy. Times become difficult, it's easy to conclude that God must have turned away or is punishing us for our sins. Since that's the way we feel, imagine, think about the recipients of Paul's letter today. The Hebrews and how they felt. They were facing persecution. The Roman government was in the early stages of trying to wipe out Christianity. It must have been tempting for those faithful to either despair, concluding that God had turned against them, or to give up and do whatever the state told you to do. But St. Paul says, rejoice in your suffering and your loss and stop trying to avoid the inevitable. For God is disciplining us and making us spiritually strong in our trials. Fear not. Accept and grow toward Jesus in spiritual strength and wisdom. Comfort one another in life's trials. Support one another. You know, our uh, priest gave excellent homilies last week on the gospel reading that comes just before this one where Jesus says, I came to set the world on fire. I believe that. He recognizes today the absurdity of the apostles' questions about how do we get to heaven? And looks for an easy way to get there, figuring they're apostles, they got a, a pass. <laughs> Jesus turns the tables on them, too. Stop worrying about others or trying to create some human formula to get to heaven. Concentrate on yourselves. Choose the narrow, the more challenging pathway. Choose a life of self-sacrifice and service to others so that the master will recognize you when he comes. If you choose a modern human track of luxury, entertainment, and frivolity, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You will lose. But take up your crosses daily. Depend entirely on the word and sacrament of God. Not on Hollywood, Wall Street, internet moguls, political superstars, or hyped-up professional athletes. No, the quiet people, the little people, the people with no social value, the people who seem old-fashioned and out of touch. They work for no money, and they give out of their need. They operate selflessly in joy. They are the people who follow the message of Jesus. They are on the pathway to salvation. They are filled with joy and care much less about this world outside. We must endure suffering and temptations to pass through the narrow gate. 
not just some easy life free of cares, responsibilities, and trials, but a sincere heart, trusting spirit, a denial of self, and a self-satisfaction, working instead for the glory of eternal life with God. Some are lost who will be first. Some are first who will be last. Pay attention. Strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. I know that too well. Strive to enter through the narrow gate. Amen. dedicate ourselves to serving those who are most in need and least able to help themselves. Let us pray to the Lord that people from the east and the west and from the north and the south may be welcomed with hospitality in new places and new lands. We pray to the Lord that those who suffer from chronic health conditions that weaken their body and spirit may find strength and hope in the Lord's presence. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially those for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. For all the sick and for all those who bring care to them, we pray to the Lord. For couples who long for children, for children who long to have a family, for all unborn children, and for all those bearing new life, we pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and consecrated life in our diocese, especially from our parish family of Mary, Mother of Mercy, and that we may all be attentive to the Lord's call in our lives, we pray to the Lord. For the success of this year's House of Charity Bishop's Annual Appeal, we pray to the Lord. For all the prayers we hold 
in the silence of our hearts. And for all of our intentions, spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, filled with mercy on your people, who strive to enter through the narrow gate. Welcome our needs and the needs of those we love as we go forward to your welcome into your kingdom. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. We pray by sending down your spirit upon them, Christ the beautiful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My sisters and brothers at the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Glory to God, my brother, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.